I'm Johnny. 792, just for you. This one was coming. We all knew it was coming. The rant about copyright. So I'm gonna talk about my favorite breakbeat, the Amen Break. Now, as a precursor, if you haven't checked out Nate Harrelson's video, go check it out right over here. There's been a movement recently to try and fund the creator of the Amen Break. I'm quite conflicted about this. For those that don't know, the Amen Break is this break beat right over here, and it sounds like this. The Winstons were this band that had a number one hit. I don't think it was actually number one, but it was a hit. It was, and it was a little song called Color and Father. On the B side, which apparently was just kind of slammed together because they needed to do something, they did a funk rendition of an old gospel song called Amen. This new version is called Amen Brother, hence the breakbeat, Amen. And this break is everywhere. Like it's literally everywhere. It starts in early hip hop and it just, it's all over the place uh, into hardcore. Jungle wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Amen. I, I just used it in that ambient track for the epic ambient battle. I mean, it's, everywhere and for good reason it sounds phenomenal it sounds so good the groove is so good so what's my problem with the copyright owner getting his due for this well there's four problems that i can see and number one is kind of a big one the owner of the copyright isn't the drummer the drummer who originally did this was named mr gregory coleman and actually it's really sad because he passed away in 2006 poor and I think homeless or at the very least destitute, not knowing that the drum beat that he laid down has created this whole new subculture. This break was also partially created by the engineer, Rodney Mills, who recorded it, who gave it its sound and its shape, which is really different from a normal drum kit. The copyright owner is the person who arranged the song. I, how entitled is he to that? I'm not saying that he isn't. I'm saying I'm really not sure. Number two, the gentleman who has arranged this has been quoted as saying that the entire culture of remixing and usage of the breakbeat is bullshit and plagiarism. And this opens up an entire can of worms about ideas, about culture, about ownership, about whether or not an artist owns his work or whether it's part of a larger cultural context. He's also said that this is another chapter of the plundering of African-American cultural patrimony or cultural birthright. As a highly privileged white Canadian, I don't know if I'm entirely comfortable with the idea of commenting on that. There's some problems with that idea. I, we should talk about this, but we have to be really careful about this because there's a lot of landmines and everybody has to listen more than they should speak. I'm gonna need a can opener for this Costco size can of worms. But when it comes to this misappropriation of this piece of cultural work, the thing to bear in mind is that the original appropriators were, for instance, NWA. Other appropriators were poor kids who just wanted to make some good music. Oh, in a lot of cases, race or even appropriation didn't enter into the equation. It was like, here's a fat ass break. Sounds awesome. Let's use it to make music that sounds awesome. Problem number three, new forms of art get created because of freedom for artists to explore. Hip hop and drum and bass and jungle and hardcore and vast swaths of electronic music wouldn't exist if it wasn't possible for artists to freely sample because there wasn't a cultural bureaucracy and a legal and commercial bureaucracy in place to prevent other people from sampling. Amen, brother. It too came from something else. Remember how I said it was a funk reimagining of a gospel song? So who originally created that? Who gets to get the credit? There's this 
idea that an artist goes out all alone and creates something. We venerate artists and we put them on these creative pedestals of how amazing they are to go and create something new. I got news for you. They're not creating something new. An artist is shaped by the culture around them, whether they know it or not. This break is 46 years old. It could have just faded to complete obscurity, but it hasn't. And I think that's a good thing. At the end of the day, the copyright owner did arrange the song and was presumably friends with Gregory Coleman. I figured the right thing to do would be to donate. It's not a legal shakedown and I appreciate and respect that. So I donated. Links to donate are down the doobly-doo. If you've used the Amen Break, or if you've loved any music that used the Amen Break, consider donating. I'd like to finish off with a couple of bars of one funky ass drummer, Mr. Gregory Coleman. 